everybody, I'm Sarah and I'm a recorder player. <laughs> Welcome back. Today I am going to be unboxing and reviewing something a bit different, the Yamaha Venova. I have partnered up with Yamaha today. This is like a hybrid instrument, a cross between a single reed instrument like a clarinet or sax with recorder-like fingerings. So I'm really curious to find out how this sounds, how this feels and can a recorder player just pick it up and play it? Before we get into the video, don't forget I've got new social media handles. You can follow me at team underscore recorder on Instagram, Twitter and TikTok. So see you there. So the Venova. I know a lot of you, my viewers, have been really curious about the Venova and you've been asking me about it. It's something new for me as well because this is a reed instrument. So I think this is a good test if someone new to playing a reed instrument can pick this up. We have a carrying strap. This is to attach the case so you can carry it around. I want something to carry this with. First impressions on the inside. I noticed that the case isn't padded. I'm used to wind instruments being like super duper padded safety, but that makes me think that it's quite indestructible. This is the Alto Venova. First impressions, it's very, very light. Feels lighter than a tenor recorder. It's really intriguing. All of these curved edges, it kind of feels like an alien life form that's evolved. I mean that in a positive way. Generally, it feels very, very nice. I like the shapes, the key work feels solid, and I can pretty quickly figure out where I'm gonna put my fingers. This feels very ergonomic, this hand position here. The width from the front to the back of the instrument is just a bit wider than it would be with a recorder. That's quite a distance. But the way that the holes and the keys are arranged, it feels really ergonomic. I also notice it's very narrow. I wonder what that will do for the sound. There's a mouthpiece and a reed already provided. I think this is in plastic. Like the rest of the instrument, it looks well put together. It feels very nice. So, are you ready to hear me try and play this? Okay. It's actually at the same pitch as a bass recorder, an octave lower than the alto recorder. There is also a soprano Venova in C, so that would come out at the same pitch as a tenor recorder. It comes with a very handy manual to tell you how to actually get a sound out of a reed instrument. Position the mouthpiece in your mouth with your upper front teeth resting about a centimeter from the tip of the mouthpiece. Okay, this feels very weird to be putting my teeth on an instrument. That's a big recorder no-no. Cover your lower teeth with your lower lip. Okay. Now it sounds much softer. Hmm. needed to produce these notes is much more than with the recorder. It doesn't necessarily need more air, but you need more pressure behind it. So I'm a bit lightheaded. I know from training myself to play big bass recorders, this is something that the stamina builds up quite quickly. Right, so on the back here, I've got this thumb hole, thumb hole. I feel at home if I've got a thumb hole. I also have what is called an octave key in the book, so let's see if I can do some of those. I have to relax for the lower notes and then give a bit more pressure and focus for the higher notes. It's coming. So what about the notes themselves? Down here for the F, F sharp, G, G sharp, we've got four keys. This is something you see on a lot of reco larger recorders. Um, the B in the B flat is interesting. To play B flat, you've put down this full key, then there's a hole in the middle, 
and you uncover the hole to play the B. If only I had a single reed expert to come and tell me how to do this. John! Can I yeah, you can go now. So you've heard what it sounds like when a recorder player tackles this for the first time. Um, single reed player, John Bittman. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Do you want to have a go? I do want to have a go. Yeah, no, I mean, it looks cool. It looks like a cool thing. You'd see it in the window of a shop and be like, oh, what's that? Does it come apart in the middle? I didn't notice that. Oh, yeah, it does. Oh, cool. So you can even transport it like that. Yeah, I think it's cool. It's super light. It really doesn't weigh anything. They seem to have rubber uh, pads that close the hole, so that yeah. seems more durable than normally with a clarinet or saxophone you get leather. <laughs> for me like the lowest tone just rich and full <laughs> As a reed player, you can, in the first moments, get more out of it than I can as a recorder player. Um, the, the fingerings feel quite natural to me, but the action of playing a reed instrument is new. But that's really fun. I'm enjoying getting used to it. <laughs> it is fun. It's fun to have something to actually have something to blow against. You no, know, that you just blow and all your air just goes. Yeah. Like a whoopee cushion. Yeah, I can. I, yeah, I could imagine this is good for training my breath support because it's giving me something to blow against. Or it's super light, you can take it apart and take it anywhere and if, let's say you want to just keep your embouchure in shape while you're on the road, you know, imagine you're on a, on a bike tour or I don't know, <laughs> then you just keep this in your pocket <laughs> or in your backpack and then you can practice your long tones and you can build your embouchure. How does the sound differ from a regular saxophone? For me, this doesn't have as many overtones as a regular saxophone. It's a little bit more oboe-y than saxophony. Yeah, even though oboe has tons of overtones. Okay. But <laughs> it's its own thing. Oh yeah, the other question, Mr. Reed player, how do the fingerings work for you? Uh, it took me a while, I have to say, because it's not the most intuitive if you come from clarinet or saxophone. There's a few little things, it's not quite a recorder, it's not quite a clarinet. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, you, you get there. That's funny, because as a recorder player, it felt pretty intuitive. It's... Pretty, yeah. I mean, it, it's, also, it's also not, you know, it's not rocket science. <laughs> It's almost old timey. You know what it sounds like? It sounds like a, like a really old timey tin can recording of a saxophone. And that's it's, kind of what it's I like got about kind of, it. It's almost like a little bit of a muted trumpet. Yeah, timbre, yeah. Like, wah, yeah, it's kind of like that. is that it has a lot of variety in the sound if I change the pressure of my lip, how hard I'm blowing, if I change my embouchure, it really changes the sound. I like that flexibility, just I can't yeah. really control it yet, but that's okay. Well, that's the same as record, you just need more air than you think. Oh, okay. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, definitely true. What do you think this thing is? Do you think the sound comes out of here? What is that for? It's like yeah. an exhaust pipe. Well, let's try it. I'll play and you cover it and we see what happens. Okay. Science. <laughs>
Oh, that's, oh, cool. that's cool. You know that. And I'm also really, because I haven't done that yet, I'm really curious to see how it sounds with a real mouthpiece. Not a real mouthpiece, like with, you know, a professional level yeah. alto saxophone mouthpiece and a real reed instead of this beginner's mouthpiece and the plastic reed. Who's your mouthpiece made by? Jody Jazz, DVNY number five. So a very small tip opening. I'll leave this part to you. Oh no, actually, I won't. I'm going to try and do it. Can I just take this off? It's very easy to take on and off. Oh, you know what she should do? She get a recorder head joint and see if you can latch it onto there. Oh, it fits perfectly. It looks weird. It's a lot heavier now. It's harder because it's a harder read and harder mouthpiece to blow, but it's way more in tune with itself. So the tuning is easier for you with your own mouthpiece and read? Yeah, so if you're a saxophone player and you buy this thing, yeah, put your own mouthpiece on it, I would say. I'm gonna try it now with a recorder. Okay. Alto, too big. Uh, soprano, too small. Oh yeah, I thought of that too, but that's not gonna fit. Oh, it feels a bit risky. Trying to make the hybrid instrument even more hybrid. Cool. I did my bit, can I go biking now? Thanks, John. So brilliant, it's ah, so easy. Oh. Ah. <laughs> I was playing it with the reed upside down. I'm quite impressed I managed to make a sound. Irish folk song but because uh, the B B natural is a little bit tricky we came out in a different tonality. So let's make some summaries about the Yamaha Venova. First of all it's a lot of fun to play as a recorder player. I like the challenge of getting used to a reed instrument, it's a completely different sound which is really exciting but it's quite easy to step into in terms of fingerings. I like the big sound, I like the dynamics, I like the fact that I can actually do dynamics. <laughs> In terms of weight and fingers, I could play for hours. In terms of breath pressure and blowing, I have to get used to it. But I think that's okay. John back! Oh my god, I didn't expect that. He went in there, then he came back out. He was wearing different clothes, now he's wearing these clothes. <laughs> I have to pay every time for having you in a video. <laughs> have a good bike ride. So let's talk a little bit about the things that I would have done differently. The first thing is how you play the B and the B natural. This is the alto by the way on the soprano, this would be for the F and the F sharp. Although it feels very natural if I'm going to that note from above. <laughs> It does become a problem if I'm wanting to use the higher of the two notes in a fast passage. That sliding motion to get quite a basic note is something that I'm not a fan of. This means a scalic passage in any sharp key, G, D, A, pretty basic keys, is made much more difficult. So this is something I would ideally like changing. So on the fingering chart I've discovered something. This is the German fingering system, not the Baroque fingering system. We all know that I'm not a fan of the German fingering system for the many reasons I've listed already. I can see why they've done it. The German fingering system allows you to play a scale up and down by lifting your fingers one by one similar to a saxophone.
Without too much effort, I can figure out the fingerings for the whole chromatic two octaves. I felt for a few of the sharp fingerings, I had to mess around with the embouchure to get them in tune. This could be because, as they state here, it's based on the German system. So I would not mind it if it was reworked a little bit to be more compatible with the Baroque system. However, I understand that that might be a step too far away from the fingerings that single reed players are used to. So this is a compromise. Very, very small detail on the fingering chart the holes are written upside down to how they normally are on a recorder fingering chart. That's confusing. So in conclusion, it is so much fun to play. But the most important thing is it's not trying to be a recorder and it's not trying to be a saxophone. It's trying to be a Vanova. Eventually the best thing is to embrace it for what it is and its own special sounds and to enjoy that. I'm really curious, have any of you tried the Vanova, the alto or the soprano version? Please share your experiences in the comments below. And if you're thinking, okay, how do I actually play it? Stay tuned because within a short time, I'm gonna be doing a beginner's tutorial for this instrument as well. And thank you so much to Yamaha for sending me this Vinova and for doing this partnership with me. It's been a pleasure. It's always a pleasure to get to know new instruments on the market and try them out for you guys. As always, you can subscribe to my channel by clicking on my face down here. Over here's the team recorder Patreon where you can choose to support the channel and here's two more videos. Thanks for watching and have a great day. Bye.